going to get louder as Thomas Adamic defends the IBF Cruiserweight Championship he won in this building 78 nights ago Ladies against and Jonathan Banks. As they make their way to the ring for tonight's main event of the evening. First, from Detroit, Michigan, tonight's challenger, Jonathan Banks. Twenty-six-year-old American Jonathan Banks turned his back on a WBO title shot and more money for this chance to fight here in hostile territory in the U.S. against the cruiserweight he considers the world's best. He's from Detroit, went to the 2004 Olympic trials, turned pro four and a half years ago. He trains out of the legendary Kronk Gym. Steve Banks built his impressive undefeated record against mid to low opposition. Major step up tonight. For sure. In the fight, we all remember he got dropped twice in the first round, got up and won that fight against Castillo. Very impressive, but no Emmanuel Stewart in his corner, Nick. His corner, though, is hoping Adamic coming back just two and a half months after that thrilling but exhausting title win will make the new champ a little bit more vulnerable. Banks, meanwhile, is coming off an unimpressive 12 round majority decision win in Germany in July to make him 20 and 0 with 14 KOs. And ladies and gentlemen, now the IBF World Cruiserweight Champion from Gilovica, Poland, Thomas Adaman. As we look at 32-year-old Thomas Adamic lives 15 minutes from here, and the Polish fans are out in force to watch the nine-year pro from Poland, living in America for four years. Fought his first three years in Europe, came to America and beat Paul Briggs to win the WBC light heavyweight title in 2005. Man, those Briggs wars put him on the map, Steve. And remember, that was 25 pounds under what he fights at now. He lost his title belt when he couldn't catch up to Chad Dawson's speed and was drained making the weight. He moved to Cruiser, has won five straight, culminating with that three knockdown split decision victory over Steve Cunningham to win the IBF title in this building last December. He's tough, he's determined, he's 36 and one with 24 KOs. Thomas Adamic ready to defend his newly won prize now. Here's ring announcer Joe Antonacci. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey, where all of tonight's action is being brought to you by main events in association with K2 Promotions and Showtime. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Aaron Davis is your commissioner. Dennis McDonough, Stephen Katz, board members. Introducing the judges as appointed. Lynn Carter, Benoit Roussel, and Steve Weisfeld. And our referee, Eddie Cotton. Boxing fans. This is the Showbox main event of the evening. 12 rounds.
rounds of boxing for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Al Lewis is our IBF supervisor at ringside, presenting first the challenger. Fighting out of the blue corner, he enters the ring wearing gold, red, and blue trunks. He weighed in at 200 pounds. He is undefeated. 20 bouts, 20 wins, no losses. 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome from Detroit, Michigan, and the legendary Gronk Jim, the number one IBF Cruiserweight contender and the current IBO World Cruiserweight Champion, Jonathan Banks! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the colors of his native Poland, red. He weighed in at 199 pounds. He enters the ring with a record of 36 wins, just one loss, 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome from Gilovica, Poland, now residing in Jersey City, New Jersey, the former WBC light heavyweight champion and the defending IBF cruiserweight Champion of the world, Tomas Goran Adaman. Our referee, Eddie Cotton, has our instructions. Boxers, you both received my instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands. Protect yourself at all times. I expect a good, clean fight. All right, let's touch gloves. Come out of the bell. If you're looking for the naturally bigger fighter, Adamic walks around about 205 or so. Banks right now probably weighs as much as 215 pounds. Unified rules apply in this IBF title fight. Adamic has the belt. Banks, of course, wants it. Eddie Cotton, the experienced veteran referee, former fighter. One thing to watch, Steve, you know, Banks is a big man. And as you said, if he lands that right hand, he says, you know, I'm the bigger guy. And he doesn't believe that Adamic has monstrous power. Adamic said he's going to box more. He's very technically sound, but he gets hit a lot. Doesn't move his head much, Nick. And, and Banks seems, from what he told us, very determined early in the fight to test that chin of Adamic. You see the amateur experience. Banks only 60 amateur fights, but he did fight in the 04 Olympic trials. He was a top amateur. And Banks, of course, with far less experience. Look at Adamic, 210 rounds. That's a lot by today's standards. Banks already that left is low, but he has poked Adamic with the jab. But trying to discourage Adamic is another story. Cunningham had his moments in a split decision loss, surrendering the title. Banks is the taller guy, 6'3". But he's very wide, giving up that height, but trying to establish that distance and get that full extension. And there he goes as he zips that jab. Very important. That's going to be the key for him. Off the jab to set up that right hand. There's the right, and Adamic didn't move, but now he gets driven back to the ropes and restarts. Well, Banks oh. wanted his respect. I think he may have gotten it with that right hand because he pushed him back. Exactly. You know, box, but don't run. And they, one interesting thing, they're stepping on each other's feet a lot. That's very unusual for two right-handed fighters. Yeah. What a huge right hand that was from Banks. And it 
did force Adamic to rethink matters and start over. Adamic trying to time Banks. He could take the lead or counter. Now he'll try to stuff the jab. He's a good counter puncher, Steve. Yeah, and one, one thing we've learned about Adamic from his previous fights, he doesn't waste punches. For a pressure fighter, he doesn't throw that many shots unless, you know, he, he knows he can land them. And we're seeing that right now. He's been very quiet. I don't think he's thrown 20 punches this round. Banks a big man. Adamic trying to walk to Jonathan Banks in yellow in the Kronk yellow. Or gold. Hasn't been a Kronk world champ crowned in 25 years. There's the right hand again from Banks. Maybe partially taken. Not a completely flush shot. A very good first round for Banks. Oh, yeah. Because this is a huge jump up in class for him. And doing well in this first round has to bolster his confidence big time. There's the right hand from Adamic as he unleashes before the bell. Picking it up with the jab a little more, okay? You start trying to let him get off. You be the leader on the shot, okay? You be the leader on the shot. You gotta be first to set the tempo. Spit bucket! You gotta be the leader on the shot, all right? Touch, touch. Everything you set up first, walk off your rhythm. You sit there and wait on him, he's gonna start trying to throw his right hand heavy. Start checking out of that, all right? Story was right hands, wasn't it, in the first round, Steve? It really was. Not that much different from our first fight. There's a Dominic landing a big right hand. It, both of them were waiting for that right hand. And that's the shot that drove a Dominic back and gave Banks a lot of confidence. The second right hand was blocked. And that was just before the bell. Adamic brushing Banks. Banks kind of tilted his head just enough to take the force away from that right hand. So, I gave Banks the first round there. So did I, and it's crucial. He can't afford to give any away. But he can't afford to get run over, and I thought he did the right thing. You know, Manuel Stewart told me he's not here in the corner, but he told me last week, he said, may get knocked out, but we got to get his respect. We're not going to run, and it's an 18-foot ring, Steve. Oh, he drills that right hand. Banks very quick. They think they're as fast as Adamic. Adamic says they have the faster hands. Yeah, I don't I don't think of Adamic as a, a real fast fighter. And yet he thought that his speed would be the difference in this fight. I, I don't see it that way. Banks sort of waiting, waiting, waiting to maybe draw Adamic in. And that right hand is quick and it's accurate. He's gotten Adamic's attention, hasn't he, Steve? He has, and you know, in the Cunningham fight, Cunningham landed so many flush right hands that drove Adamic's head back, but there was no effect other than that. That doesn't mean that when Banks lands the same shot, nothing will happen. Perfect point. Cunningham, not the puncher Banks is, perhaps. Most probably not. Oh, low, low left hand from Banks. I don't like it, Steve. He feels his range that he's safe. Kind of the crunk way, huh? Keeping yeah. that left hand low. Isn't it? <laughs> Loading up that right. Stepping on each other's feet again. You could see it there. It's happening again and again. Banks with a very wide stance. And he stuffs a jab in Adamic's face. Adamic gets on the jab now to the body, to the chest. So they jab, and Banks comes back with something, which is crucial. Banks fighting an intelligent, forceful enough fight. I think they're, Nick, I think they're stepping on each other's lead feet so often because neither one is really boxing on the balls of its feet. They're stepping forward very slowly and deliberately. There's no bounce to their step. Hasn't been one clinch in this fight. We always like that. Good action. This pace is great for Banks. Really. He looks pretty relaxed, too. Yeah, he's not under siege at any time. Exactly, know? which you would expect, although that could, certainly could happen later it in the fight. It could change. Yeah. Adamic bending, bending low, and Banks sees the opening, the non-activity from the champion, and he takes the play away. Too much patience from Adamic there. He had Banks cornered. He just let him walk away to his left. I think a good round for the challenger so far. Down the stretch, Adamic, as we saw in the fight against Cunningham, was getting waxed in the fourth round, and he knocked down uh, the champion to make it a 10-9 win for him. So he is perpetually dangerous. 
Jonathan Banks in the Kronk gold. Right hand lands from Adamic. Single shots. Boy, what a crowd here. And a very interested spectator is Steve Cunningham. The man who lost his title to Adamic right here December 11th. He wants another crack. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? He deserves one. Oh, it'd be a great fight. You have to counter with the right. You have to move. You have to move all the time. You have to block his right shot and then counter with your left. You have to do it all the time. You have to move more. You're not moving enough. Don't worry about it. He will change. He will change the way he's fighting. Not sure I understand that uh, advice, Nick, or instruction, because they're saying Adamic has to move more. In what way? Forward? Sideways? Uh, he's not getting hit that much. I, I think he needs to pick it up and accelerate his attack a little bit. I'm probably the only person here, but I've given Banks the first two. Second round was very close. Yeah. I gave it to Adamic based on that right hand he landed in the last five seconds. Banks uh, whips a hook. We haven't seen a hook in this in this fight so far. Banks off the back leg. He's really leaning back, but that's loading him up for the right as well. But he's not jabbing anymore. And Adamic's pressing forward. He's wary of leery of that uh, jab from Banks, but Banks trying to lure him in and then hook. So no jab anymore from Banks. Not a good idea in my opinion. He's got a nice jab, Steve. And no, oh, just stuffed it there. Well, Banks is waiting for an attack that really isn't coming. Adamic inching forward, inching forward, but not throwing. And he drills the jab again, Banks. Boy, Banks is not running at all. There's not a lot to hide here in an 18-foot ring with these big men, but he's using the ring well, and Adamic is sort of following and not shrinking it. The better jabs this round, no doubt, Adamic. A couple of queen jabs. Boy, Steve, against the Adamic, the fierce concentration. I mean, any fighter in a title fight, but you can't relax for a split second. And you can see it on Banks' face. Gets hit with a right hand there. Nothing serious, but the crowd loves it. Nice footwork by Banks, though, getting out of there before there was any further damage. This crowd is waiting to explode for Thomas Adamic. Adamic showing a little head movement. Banks tried to nail him with a big right hand. Banks is presenting some issues, isn't he, Steve? He is, but you get the impression a little bit this round. There's a hint that Adamic is going to start turning it up, walk into his man a little faster with more purpose, but he is getting countered, Nick. Yeah. He's trying to close it, close the uh, gap a lot better now and not follow as much. Beautiful timing there by Banks. He's cutting the corners, and now the right hand landed partially. Banks comes back with a strong, partially blocked right. They want Adamic to catch and counter as well. But Banks reluctant to take the lead much in this round. There he sticks a jab. Closing out the third. These are championship rounds. I go to, we're going to go perhaps 12. Or less. It's a title fight here on Showbox. Just go slow. You don't have to speed up. Just be patient. Be patient. Don't exchange punches. Remember. Remember to use jab. A lot more jabs. A lot more jabs. All the time. You have to, after, the, after you hit him with the right, you have to use left. All the time. But first of all, be patient. Be patient. Jab, 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 black, and then you hit him with the right. You're going to start when you get more tired, and then you can speed up. 
action from round three. Adamic doesn't like to waste punches, but for the first time in the fight, he got Banks to the ropes, and look how Banks ducked and then slipped away. Totally took away any offensive momentum Adamic had there. Good footwork by Banks. We head to the fourth of this title fight. Nick Charles, Steve Farhood, Showbox, the new generation from a raucous new, uh, Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. Thomas Adamic in the Polish colors of red and white, his IBF Cruiserweight title on the line against undefeated Jonathan Banks of Detroit. Banks backing up, Adamic, as you said, Steve, looking more aggressive, but they want him to take his time and throw a lot of jabs and really break down Banks, feeling they could fatigue him and force him to fight. And you hit on a thing, pace being key here, Steve. Banks sort of had it his way the first couple of rounds. Nick, exactly, and that's why I don't understand what they're telling Adamic in the corner. He'll slow up, he'll slow up. Well, you have to make him slow up. How many rounds are you going to give away? Not that Banks is necessarily up 3-0. I have him up 2-1. But how many rounds do you want to give away before you accelerate? You know, Banks told us yesterday, I've never seen a crowd come in the ring. Of course, if Adamic gets beat, they'll be in the ring. I have a feeling. <laughs> and we'll be under the ring. Yes, we will be under the ring. <laughs> oh, Banks trying to tee off with the right. A little wild. He was missing, but if he connects with it, now they'll rumble a little bit. Could be the first break of the fight. Eddie Cotton separates them. Banks, he's not in position to land the right. He's got his left low, and his right isn't even cocked. Now he's starting to look for it. Nadamic not moving, moving directly towards Banks. Nick, I said it at the top, Adamic does not throw a lot of body shots. I've noticed that about him. When he gets Banks pinned against the ropes or in the corner, that's when he should be going to the body. He's not. By missing upstairs, right? Adamic gets hit with the left and rocked back. Beautiful hook set up by a jab. Not really a combination, but Adamic walking in square, Steve. He got rocked. He did, and Adamek's right eye, Nick, looks like it's about to burst. It's yeah. marked for sure. It was prior to that. Now that hook really landed. We haven't seen that from Banks much of this fight, but he made it count with a left hook that hit, that landed flush on the champion. Boy, Banks yeah. dialing in nicely. And Nick, you'd say that the worst place for Banks to be is on the ropes, right? Of course, what does he do? Lands <laughs> his best shot of the punch coming off the ropes. Adamic very cautious now, you're right. Walking in a little bit of head movement, but not that elusive. He's waiting for Banks to commit, but he can't land a counter. Banks gets off and moves. He's, Banks not the most elusive guy, but he's moving nicely and really controlling, controlling where this fight is being fought at. Big round for the challenger. He got you with the left hook. You should never be hurt. We catch with, with this. You, you, you don't have to go forward so quick. Really, left, left jab, just a jab, just a jab him, just a jab him. He has to remember to block, remark. You have to think more about defensive fighting. You, you, you don't have to go too anxious, really. Don't go too anxious. Action from round four. There haven't been that many big shots in this fight. And that was a short, sweet left hook with Adamic thinking he had Banks in trouble because Banks was back to the ropes. Let's see it again. Banks is a big guy, six foot three, to be bending, but it worked there. Gave him a tremendous opportunity. And look how Adamic drove all the way back across the ring. And Steve, I was wrong. Prior to that, there was a jab, and then that right hand could have set up the left. It, it got Adamic a little squared off. Yeah, the punch, the punch landed, Nick, because it was a real short left hook. Steve, not a good thing. It's another thing Adamic has to worry about. It's not that they thought he was a one-trick pony, uh, Banks, but they were, they were concerned about his right hand, not his left. And there's the jab from Banks. Now he's backing up again, same spot. Banks in his own corner now, spins off the rope, punches when he's backing up. 
Dominic sinks a jab to the chest of Banks. Banks just looked to his corner in the middle of the action. That's not a good idea. Right now, Adamic, Banks is seeing the right hand coming from Adamic. What Adamic has to do is either set it up with the jab or counterpunch. But he can't throw the right as a lead. Crowd getting into every move from Adamic. He runs into a left, Adamic. Again, that sort of a hook. Adamic swelling around the right eye. Yeah, you know, that's it's almost like that little check hook. They're going to use Adamic's aggression against them, Steve. And the amount of fighting that's going on, Nick, is playing perfectly for Banks. They're going to let Adamic, Adamic slip in at times there. Gonna watch that hook all night. Come on, pick him up a little bit, pick him up. Yeah, low blow and Banks felt it. There again, Banks stuck in a corner. What happened? He jumped forward and basically by clinching got out of trouble. Adamic's going to start dialing in the pressure, I think. We thought, yeah, oh, nice right hand from Adamic. It was a looping shot. And it got the crowd in an uproar. I said before, Banks likes to keep his hands up. He's not exactly doing that tonight, is he? <laughs> not so, at all. So Adamic would be served better to throw straight punches as opposed to looping shots. Look how low Adamic's left hand is. He's there for a right hand at times, but he's not punching. But now he is as he stick, sticks a jab in Banks' face. Banks is moving right or left, trying to set up the right hand. And there's the right back from Banks as he buzzes the champion. Yeah, the crowd looking to will the champion into winning. It looks like he's very close round again, Steve. But close round, but maybe things have turned a little bit only yes. because Banks is spending more and more time either against the ropes or in a corner. Good point. Here comes Adamic. Adamic with the jab. Boy, they're banking on stamina, durability of the champion as we end the fifth. Yes, well, we got a great fight coming up, Steve, uh, in Montreal. The dangerous punching Fulgencia Zuniga against Lucien Boutte, who looked great for about 11 rounds at show <laughs> box, and then he barely finished on his feet. Well, that's true, and, and what a great style matchup, too, because Boutte is a beautiful southpaw boxer. Zuniga, Colombian puncher. And if anything, we saw that Boutte was vulnerable, and a fight goes until the final bell of the 12th round when Boutte fought Andrade. Zuniga saw that fight. He hopes round one of his fight with Butte will be sort of like round 13 of the Butte Andrade fight. He unmasked Victor Oganoff on Showbox, the unbeaten Russian. There's the Polish crowd. We were talking about Will and their guy. He gave the last round to Adamek, I say. I did. Yeah, I did too. We have it a little differently. I have Banks ahead, but that second round, I'm very shaky on giving it to him, and you gave. The chap you gave the champion that exactly. I, I have a, a Dominic up uh, down. Excuse me by one point. We oh, have him down. Yeah, I have Banks ahead by a point. You know, Steve. Uh, Adamic told us after a month his wife was sick of him hanging around the house, and he mentally and emotionally recovers. He told you. Uh, quickly, but what about evidence of coming back so soon? Banks was hoping to exploit that. Hard to say whether that affected him or not, Nick, or maybe it was that right hand Banks landed early in the fight that told Adamic, hey, this guy maybe can hurt me. And Banks has hurt him with the right hand and the left hook. But there's, there's not enough of a sense of urgency, in my opinion, from Adamic. Adamic at this point because he gets Banks like right now. He gets him to the ropes. Too much posing. He jumps in with a left right and backs up. Yeah, he does. And Banks again with the jab, and he's working left. Moving into the right-handed power. To, and Adamic, you know, he's got single shot power. He beat Thomas Ulrich that way after he outclassed him early. There's a, a flurry from him, a combination lands from the champion. But Banks just hanging right in there, in the pocket, waiting to time those rushes, perhaps. But he's got to get on a jab a little bit more. Tucking that right hand, missing badly, and Adamic didn't make him pay for it. Right, step back, man. Let's 
Boy, it's not always pretty, but you notice that Banks is not only spinning out of the corners or ropes, but he's also holding when necessary. Steve, Very smart. Steve, the thing about Banks so far also, he, he hadn't looked like he's... He's getting drilled here, though, and, but he hadn't looked like he's fatiguing. Oh, oh that was an awful, awful low blow. You got five, up to five minutes to recover, or you lose the fight, and the referee's supposed to urge you, uh, gently at least, and maybe forcefully to get back in it eventually. He's ready. Nick, it was a low blow, but you know what? Banks' left arm was wrapped around Adamic's head, so often the case with low blows. And look at Adamic going to the body as he drills the challenger to the left. And goes again to the chest. Interesting now that he's targeting the body there's more body work and a big right hand. And Banks says to bring it on, and off the ropes fires a left in return. So Banks not acting like he was phased by it, but that was scored big for Thomas Adamic. Now, it didn't even land really with that right as Banks was turning on the shot. Nick, you can tell by the way Adamic is moving his hands very in a very animated way that he's turning it up now. Body shots. Body shots, a double hook. He's adjusting. That's what champions do. He's adjusting on the fly. He's, he really creased uh, Banks this round with body shots. Big round for the champion. Crushing the man. Just keep it balanced and walk to the man. Jab, pick jab, start throwing the timing out with the check hook, okay? Mm -hmm. You got that? Yeah. That's all we worked on. You're backing up from the man too much. You're giving him all this respect. Sorry, take it to him, bang. Look. Boom, bang, bang, okay? So we worked on. It's not hard. Get your breathing. According to the rules, it's not a low blow if the fighter who gets hit low has his arm wrapped around the other fighter's head and is pulling him down. It's exactly what happened. As Adamic started to throw the left, it was going to land low no matter what because Banks was dragging him down. Good call. That is not technically a low blow. You spotted it, Steve, as we head to the second half of this championship fight. Nick Charles, Steve Farhood ringside for this title fight. The cruiserweight title on the line. Thomas Adamic won it here in the building in December. And he's looking to go home with it again, of course. Jonathan Banks has never lost as a pro. Comes from Detroit. He is wildly unpopular here. Nick Adamic isn't all that comfortable fighting on the inside. He likes to strike from a little bit of distance. The adjustment he's making, he made it last round. Let's see if he continues to make it. Wow. Is getting close enough to land to the body first, then the head. It worked last round. It, it sure did. Softens Banks up. There it is again to the and, body. And I think Banks needs that's He needs space. So we both have it even, huh? Halfway through? Yes, 57-57. So I got it. But the momentum right now is a oh, dominant. Yeah. Banks tried a little double jab and tried to zero in with the right hand. Here comes Adamic. Look at his stance. Look at his legs, that back leg. Banks just dipping out of danger. Banks takes a flush shot, follow-up hook. So that finish-up hook from Adamic does damage. Combination, rough stuff. Oh, look how squared up Banks is as he's walking to the champion now. Well, that's what his corner wanted him to do. He's going to have to land something big to reestablish control. He's not going to do it with any fancy boxing. I think Banks needs his space. Not to run backwards, but he needs that extension. I agree, and that's why the body punching by Adamic is so smart and so effective. Yeah, Adamic outpunched him 4-1 to one there in that exchange. Adamic in the red on the right, you see. Here he comes. See if he'll try the body again. 
Banks sort of waiting to counter, taking too many shots, even though he blocked most of those. And the punch output of Banks, Nick, way down. Really dropped, doesn't it? As his hands are dropping as well. Well, this is the strategy. He said, be patient. You're going to break this guy down. And then you get, you apply more pressure. That's really what the corner said after two. And the pressure at this point, Nick, it's as much mental as it is physical. Because Banks knows no matter what he does, Adamic's coming. Yeah, and Adamic's out punched him three to one in this round. Partially blocked, I think. Yep. Close out the seventh. Another one in the bank, it seems, for Adamic. Just do exactly what you're doing. Don't change anything, please. Don't fight him. You, you have to remember his left hook. And now what you have to do, I see the chances. You have to do very, very patiently fight. But remember one thing, he can still hit. So please remember the defense. Action from round seven. Early in this fight, Adamic did not go to the body at all. Look at that, right under the elbow, a beautiful left hook, and Banks shows, subtly shows the effect of that punch. And again, he's finishing up, Adamic is, with body punches. You see Banks straighten up that left hook to the body, definitely hurt him. And this championship fight is flying by. Now they're worried about, mostly worried about Banks' left hook. You know, it was the one best shot of the fight, perhaps, single shot, but at the same time, he's got a big right hand. That's his calling card. And as this fight gets difficult for Banks, you wonder how much would it help if he were turning to the corner to the familiar face of Emmanuel Stewart, who's not only his lifelong trainer, but maybe the best trainer in boxing. Yeah. James Basher, very experienced in the corner, though. Well, an exchange there. There's the right hand. Adamic backs up to the ropes and holds on. Banks senses an opportunity yes. here, Nick. Adamic's got, got stung a little bit. Here comes Banks. He's pressing forward. Now he's got to start punching. Adamic almost inviting him in, but Banks clinches like they're both a little tired. I thought the champion got stung in that. He did, but no follow-up. Banks didn't seem like he had the legs to but here, create the distance. Here comes second wind. Is Adamic resilient? Oh, right hand and a wow, return. Right Counterpunch. Oh, Banks looks tired. Sudden explosion. Here comes Adonic. Body shots. Banks in serious shape. Eddie Cotton looking in. Suddenly it's over. Oh, look at poor Banks in the corner. Didn't know what hit him. We didn't take those shots, we could tell you. It was Thomas Adamic. He softened up Banks with the body shot starting in the sixth round. Took over the fight in the second half. Patience the key. Oh, Banks on his feet. He was just neutral corner in sad, sad shape. But Steve, he went down, in, like I like to say, in flames. He didn't run all night. I'm not, I'm not going to criticize Eddie Kahn for not stopping the fight after the knockdown. But as Banks got up and he waved the fighters together, there was not a doubt in my mind that he was going down again and going down hard. Absolutely. I agree. Oh, the crowd sure got what they wanted. So did Thomas Adamic to prove that 78 days after winning a hard-bitten, grueling, draining title fight could come back and close it out inside the distance here on Showbox, here in virtually his hometown, Newark, New Jersey. Thomas Adamic. I thought he was stung even earlier in the round, it seemed. The way he fights, you, you felt that even though Banks was 
landing effectively the first two or three rounds. It didn't bother Adamic at all. He's so confident in his style. He Sweet. never, I was a little critical that he didn't accelerate a little faster. Turns out he knew exactly what he was doing. He, he didn't did. have to. Once he took control of the fight, the fight was basically over. Steve, the, you know, the granite chin, the fact that he could take shots, that he just never gets out of his game plan that way. He doesn't get completely rattled. And just that mental toughness again, not to you know, lose a round and come back and move on to the next one. You know, it's that's mental toughness to me. So Adamic would wanted to set up that right hand, he said. All but it night. was it was Banks, Nick. It was Banks with the big right hand. And Adamic, we we talk about his chin. You could see that this gave Banks hopes for, for hope for the first time in about three rounds. Look at the right hand flush. I mean, you can't hit a guy harder. And I do think Banks hits harder than Cunningham, who landed so many right hands against Adamic. But in the same round, the right hand, that was it. The fight was over from that one right hand. It's basically a one-punch knockout. Banks gets up, but he's done. Once again, beautiful, right? You know what? Our first fight was short. One guy took the right hand. The other guy delivered it back. That was the difference in the fight. You could say the same thing here. When Banks landed his big right hand, Adamic took it flush. Didn't get rattled. But when Adamic landed the big right hand, uh, you could see what happened to Banks. And look at him here. He, he's lifeless. His hands are low. Now he picks it up. Adamic, a veteran move, went first to the body there to finish the fight. And then to the head. He was defenseless. The right move by Eddie Cotton. Wow, you want to see a beaten fighter. Watch the way Banks goes down yeah. here. His eyes had that far away look. You can even tell from a shot that far away. I'll tell you, academic, but going into that eighth and fateful round, all three judges had Adamic winning, two of them by a point, one by three points. So it is very official here with an exclamation point as Thomas Adamic makes the first defense of his IBF cruiserweight title. Oh. Explosive to Joe Antonacci. Ladies and gentlemen, the time one minute and 30 seconds of round number eight. Your winner by technical knockout and still the IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World from Gila. First loss for Jonathan Banks. And it was a crushing defeat. Banks gave Adamic a lot to think about. Two of the judges gave Banks the first two rounds, so Adamic stayed patient. He was playing catch up whether he knew it or not. And he came back and he swept the last three before that eighth round. So he took over the fight on all three judges' cards and certainly on ours in the fifth round. So Thomas Adamic breaks down and knocks out Jonathan Banks. The champion is with Steve Farhood now. Early in the fight, Banks had some success, but Thomas never looked in the least bit concerned. Is that accurate? Na początku kilka razy cię trafił, ale nie sprawiałeś wrażenia kogoś, kto się przestraszył lub chce zmienić sposób walczenia. Uh, I'm mountain guy, I'm hard. My chin is very hard. I like a hard fight. I'm very happy. I could win. Dziękuję, że mogę wygrać, popisać się, pokazać się w telewizji Showtime. Thank you TV Showtime. And thank you people which come into to the, the big, big fight, my, my fight. Yeah. Anything he, you want to add there that he said uh, in Poland? Yeah, he said he was so happy so he could show how good a boxer he is, not only before the Showtime television, which is proud to show whatever he can do in, in the ring, but also in front of all those people. 
Banks landed a big left hook in the second round, I believe it was, and some big right hands. Did he get Tomas's respect? Did Tomas come forward a little more slowly because he was fearful of getting hit with those big shots again or no? Nie trafił cię w drugiej i w trzeciej rundzie prawą ręką. Czy powód, dla którego atakowałeś go mniej w tym czasie był taki, że poczułeś respekt do tych ciosów? Znaczy, ja od początku wiedziałem, że ma prawą rękę, dlatego trener mi powiedział tak, lewy blok, czekasz cierpliwie. Czekasz cierpliwie, mm -hmm. bo moja szybkość jest przed 12 rund. Mm -hmm. I wyczekałem po prostu tak, jak Andrzej powiedział mi w czasie każdej rundy. Czekaj cierpliwie, nie napalaj się. Masz go, czuj, on, powiedz, że czułem, ja go czułem na widelcu, ale czekałem, byłem cierpliwy, bo nie chciałem zapać jakiegoś ciosu. Of course, I got a lot of respect of the right hand of Jonathan Becks. I knew he can hurt me any time, but from the beginning, my trainer Andrew Gmitru told me, just be patient, be patient, your time will come. Just don't do anything stupid. Don't go forward. I mean, too recklessly. Your time will come. You will. Uh, you will be able to utilize your speed. And the body punching seemed to turn the fight around clearly in Tomas's favor. Kilkakrotnie zacząłeś trafiać go na na ciało i wyglądało tak, że to zmęczyło go. Czy uważasz, że to zmieniło sposób walczenia Banksa? Ja robiłem swoje, gdy mi się odchylał. Można powiedzieć, że bardzo. Siad na tylnej części, wiedział, że obserwowali moje walki, wiedział, wiedzieli, że mam dobrą lewą rękę, dlatego siadł mi troszeczkę na tą stronę, więc chciałem zmienić tempo, żeby nie, nie przyzwyczaić go do ciosów, że czasem uderzam na górę, więc zmieniłem ciosami na dół. I realized they were watching my fights before, so they were trying to do everything to prevent those body shots, but then I changed the tactic, I started fighting slightly different, so I was able to, um, to connect with more body shots, and this is what, what, what changed the fight. In the past, Tomas was a light heavyweight champion. Now he's clearly number one cruiserweight in the world. Yesterday at our fighter meetings, he told us about his future plan, something we didn't know about. Maybe he could tell us again what he'd like to do in the near future. Byłeś mistrzem świata do 175 funtów. Jesteś absolutnie niekwestionowanym najlepszym bokserem w wadze cruiserweight. Ale wczoraj zdradziłeś, że być może masz jeszcze jakieś plany. Czy mógłbyś powiedzieć ich trochę więcej? Powiedz, że w boksie wszystko jest możliwe. Czyli wszystko może się wydarzyć, wszystko, wszystko może się wydarzyć, to jest już w telewizji, powiedz, że tutaj propozycje są w telewizji i one rządzą. Chodzi o tą wagę ciężką. No i wszystko jest możliwe. What I'm saying is everything is possible. I believe in the United States of America everything is possible. So I can fight as a heavyweight and maybe win the championship as a heavyweight. Chcę walczyć tutaj w Stanach Zjednoczonych, tu mieszkam z rodziną i chcę pokazywać polskim i amerykańskim kibicom kawo dobrego boksu przez jeszcze kilka lat. I live with my family in the United States, so I want to show both American and Polish fans the best of Tomek Gadamek, uh, show them what I can do in the ring, but like I said, for both of them, for Polish people, also for my American fans. We have great fans. Whatever weight he fights at, we'll be watching Tomas Adamek. Nick? Hey, look out, David. Hey, uh, you might have...